Hey guys, Jack Spierko here. Uh, time for a quick video that has nothing to do with ketogenics for a while, other than it is good for your body and good for your diet to be outside and growing your food. Uh, this is my timber frame pond, aka the Miyagi, and the, is the you know as I've said before, this area is pretty rough right now, and that's because we have this big project coming, and I'm going to rent a excavator uh, with a uh, grading uh, blade. So we'll be able to clean all this up and I'll have like 40 people out here working on this project. So there's no reason for me to like start breaking my back on any of these rocks or anything when we have that equipment coming. So I've just kind of left it that way. And I've talked about these garden beds that are going to go in for a while. And I've been saying things like the back is going to be 12 feet, the front is going to be 8 feet. And people are like, what the hell are you talking about? So this is the basic outline. It's not squared up. It's not level. Uh, but it was a sanity check to make sure it worked even though it worked on paper. And it does. I'm glad I did it, though. I learned a few things I'll talk about here. Um, but you can see now what I end up with is 12 foot on the back, 8 foot on the front, 4 foot width. So it looks complicated. No, it doesn't look complicated. It's a, it's, a, it's a right angle. But it looks like something unconventional. It's actually extremely conventional. This is actually three very conventional sized garden beds. It's an 8 by 4, an 8 by 4, and a 4 by 4 without these pieces right here. This is what I mean. If you built a standard 4x4 bed, these short pieces here, like this right here, they're 4 feet. So if you had one that went from here to here, and one foot went from there to there, you'd have a 4x4 raised bed. Well, once you had that piece, then this is an 8x4, which is a very common size of bed that people make. And then you'd have an, uh, a 4x8 here. So all you've got is two, two 4x8 beds cornering a 4x4, just we've left it open because there's no reason to spend the money and the work on that material right there. We don't have to hold back that much. It's not like we're holding back. It's not a retaining wall. It's going to hold back a cliff or something. Uh, very, very easy to do. So the couple things that I learned about this. Number one, when you do things on paper, uh, you can be very accurate with scale and graph, and everything I do is accurate, but the look might not be what you're really going for or the functionality. So the distance that I have right now from the wall of the pond to these rails, five feet. And I did that because it just worked out with this dimension and five feet back off the corner angle and off the end angles, the distance when I put it, because there's four of these going in. There's one here, one there, one there, and one over there. The distance between these ends right here was exactly six feet by doing it this way. And six feet is a beautiful distance if you want to take a cattle, a 16-foot standard cattle panel and you stick it here and you use because this is going to be stacked up almost 30 inches tall. So all you got to do is just put it in here and bend it. Like when people make a greenhouse out of them, you get an arch. And with a six-foot gap, the top of your arch is like up here, way up here. I mean, it's like at about seven foot two, I think is what I remember measuring it at. By bringing it one further foot out, it's going to pull these ends back a half a foot. So they're going to end up with a seven-foot gap. That's still It'll still work with my arches. And I just think I'll have a lot more room. It'll be less tight in here. This is all overgrown, uh, so it's not as tight as it looks, but still, this will make it easy. At that, I'll be able to maintain this ground in here, because this will all be grass once it's all cleaned up. And my, uh, my lawnmower will be able to just cruise in here and just drive through here and maintain this without having to come in here with a weed eater or something like that. So it's probably better we do it that way. You can see the pond's still rocking. It was down to 57 degrees last night. It's the coldest it's been. The fish, uh, let's see if they're, if they're all around. I, I threw them some pellets earlier. Usually they're all over it. Yeah, they ate. It's gone. Except a few sit on top of the pellets. There's some of the goldies. Uh, but they were not as, uh, as spunky as they usually are. So that's how that's going to go. Uh, so again, I, I figured out that I'm going to need to give a greater distance off of the wall. I don't have to. I just think it's going to look better and it's going to be more functional. The other thing I figured out is doing the first course is going to be a pain in the butt where I have these abutments here, right? So what I want to make clear, so that you guys know what I'm doing here, is that this kind of interlocking pattern, now, you know what, I can use the pond, because it makes perfect sense if you see the pond. You're doing kind of a dovetail here. So if this one comes to the end, it's shallow on the other end, and then this one, so they interlock like this. This is just the easiest way to do raised beds with timbers or 4x4s. So that's how these are going to go. So what I think I'll do, 
Obviously we have an eight foot and a four foot, which makes it real easy and almost no waste because, well, there's zero waste because you just take the eight foot and cut it in half. And that gives you a four foot and a four foot. And then it gives you a four foot and a four foot over there. The rest you just don't even cut. But what I'll do is my next course on this side is going to be an eight foot and a four foot down there. So they alternate. And also the board that comes here on the second course, instead of stopping here, it will overlap this one. And then this one will stop short. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take an eight foot board, an eight foot timber, set it up to overlap this, and bolt this first course together. And then do the same thing all the way around. So your first course is already two of these screwed together. That'll make it really easy because then this will be stable. This won't be wobbling around while we're trying to do the first course. So we'll, do, we'll build out the first two levels before we level it. Then we'll come here, set the level at the top just by eye. You can just kind of hold it and get another person to take and take a structural wood screw and just go in like that. In this case here, in like that. Same thing there. We'll do all the corners that way and we'll be too high. That way everything's nice and stable. We can then take framing squares and make sure we're square here, there, 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 and there. As square as we can get. It's, it's not a... This is not a palace, it doesn't need to be perfect, but we'll square it up as best we can. Before we do that, we'll take the excavator with the blade, we'll scrape the ground, we'll have this area pretty much level. There'll be some imperfection, obviously, we won't get it perfect. And we'll just use rocks or whatever to shim this to make this first two courses level. Once that's level, you just backfill it with some dirt to hold it, and then you just start adding courses. And it's just, just alternating your end pieces. We'll have somebody over here running a chop saw, just dropping, you know, we'll set up a jig so they don't even have to measure. So you just push over up against the jig four feet, zip, you got two pieces. So we'll go really fast once we get that done. So the key is going to be getting all four of these squared and leveled on that first two courses. And then the height is going to be right around, I think I figured out to like 28 inches. And that should be high enough traditionally from everything we've done around here. We don't have ducks getting in there. If it's a little too low and the ducks cause problems, I'll add a course. And I'll keep doing it until no duck problems come. Once I'm sure I don't have any duck problems, I'll go ahead and put a cap rail on this, just like I did on the pond. So we'll put uh, probably two by eight cap rail. And that'll make bench. So you'd be able to sit anywhere you want, but I mean, most people obviously would probably want to sit this way facing the pond. So that gives us, especially if we're out here doing talks or something, gives us a tremendous amount of seating. It actually gives us 16, 32, 64 square feet just on the inside. If you had a, a talk going on, and I was standing like over here, you've got 24 feet just straight looking at a speaker there, plus you've got your sides. So it'll be a good place to do presentations, a good place to hang out. And if you notice, it's awful shady over here, isn't it? Well, the gardens will get plenty of sun, but by, mid -after by late afternoon going into evening, this area is very shaded. That's why we put the pond here, so it gets enough sun, but it doesn't get baked. That's why we're putting this here. Eastern sun is your friend when you garden in the south, especially like Texas where it's hot as hell in the, in the summer. So that's the project. If it's not made sense when I've explained it or shown a drawing, you know, now maybe the scale makes sense. You can see it's pretty big scale. Um, you think about it, what, what this really is, is four, what, eight? It's eight four by eight beds and four four by four beds is the, is the same amount of square footage. And that's more food than we can eat. That's more garden than we can, we can use from food. So there's going to be a lot of herbs and flowers uh, and things like that mixed in with this to bring in uh, pollinators and stuff. We'll do you know, my standard uh, polyculture type of, of crop in here. Well, we're going to bring irrigation. I've got a line stubbed up right there. So all four of these will be on automated irrigation. We're going to, by the time this is done, the pond is going to be on a float valve. That way we never have to worry about topping the pond off. And this is just going to be my favorite spot, I think, on the on the property except for what's going to be happening in there. But if you want to know what's happening in there, you either have to wait till next year or you hope you have to come to the workshop. How do you come to the workshop? You don't, we're sold out. But this is what we're going to be doing. You guys that are coming, it's going to be a hell of a time. And God, I hope we have weather like today. This is literally God's weather today, guys. It is like 74 degrees right now and just beautiful. So we'll catch up with you later. If you got any questions about this project or where we're going with it, let me know, and uh, we should have everything looking really good here in about a month and a half.